Have you ever had to find a rental car after a late flight? Imagine if you were renting a stranger's vehicle. Turo, a peer-to-peer -peer car company, brings an element of adventure to your trip by allowing you to rent a personal vehicle from someone looking to make some extra money from their car. But rentals like the one I'm doing here are putting the company in the crosshairs of traditional rental car companies. Uh, so here's how it went. After several screens full of instructions, we find the address for our car in a nearby parking lot. This is definitely not quite as straightforward as renting from a traditional car rental agency. We're in a parking lot that's maybe a quarter mile away from the airport. It's near the Sheraton Hotel, and we were told to find the orange cones. We found the orange cones, and we've actually found our car. It's right here. Next step is to take a selfie of myself with the car. Good shot. After verifying I'm the renter, the car's owner electronically unlocks the door for us. We're checked in, we've done our inspection, let's go. The two-day rental of this 2019 BMW X3 comes to, without insurance, $160. A comparable luxury SUV from National Car Rental would have cost us 37% more. National's quote for $220 includes $66 in taxes and fees. Turo says nowhere in the U.S. are those same fees and taxes being imposed on its customers. And National points out in this example that its contract includes unlimited mileage, whereas our Turo rental does not. All right, we've got our fancy wheels. Now tomorrow we're going to meet the owner of a car who rents it on Turo, but it's a really different car than the one we've got. How's it going, Jason? Good Chris. to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. I haven't ever seen a slingshot before, I have to say. Uh, I haven't either until uh, I went to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Mullins and his slingshot is what Turo says it's all about. Extra cash for car owners, unique experiences for renters. How often are you renting this out? Four to six times a month. Mullins rents his slingshot for around 100 bucks a day. With his monthly car payment, he paid $15,000 for the slingshot, and other costs, he says he's pretty much breaking even. But he says he sees the potential down the road to come out ahead. The more people catch on to it, the more um, subscribers, the more people that understand what it is and are aware, um, the more people will be able to rent their cars. And I don't mind adding another car to it. He says he's had no major issues with renters. Like the established companies, Turo offers insurance to renters. It also insures the hosts for accidents or damage that occur during the rental. But as in the example of these cars in Denver, if a car is damaged or stolen between rentals, it falls on owners and their own insurance. The big car rental agencies are focusing their ire less on individuals like Mullins and more on these types of people. Are you guys doing rental for Toro? When I returned our BMW to the parking lot, I met Carlos Bazin. I personally have done around 1,800 trips with Toro. He and an employee were prepping cars for renters, assembly line style. Most of the vehicles had lock boxes on their windows. A lot of business travelers uh, rent cars. Bazan tells me he's among five Turo power hosts who've got 70 cars at this San Diego lot. So you're making a full-time living doing this? It is full-time living, yes. For Turo, is this a problem or an opportunity? I went to San Francisco to meet with Andre Haddad, Hello. Turo's hey, CEO. He's aggressively trying to grow his company, now valued at more than a billion dollars. How many people do you have now? We have a bit more than 350 people now. We've been growing our team roughly 100% uh, every year. So this time next year, you think you'll have 700 people? We might well have 700 people this time next year, yes. Really? Haddad shows us the six cars he owns, right. all of which he rents out using Turo. So let me show you how this works. You push this button here. Including this Tesla Model X he bought four years ago. I'd say the first year when everybody wanted to drive one, I was renting it out you know, at more than $500 a day. $500 a day? Yeah. On this day, Haddad's using it to get to work. So when people describe your company as the Airbnb of cars, mm -hmm. what do you say? I say that's just about right. Like Airbnb, Turo is the dominant player in its peer-to-peer -peer market. Selection, price, and convenience, I think, are the reasons why we think fundamentally uh, we are better than traditional rental car. When you have the slogan, way better than a rental car, that must antagonize the incumbents, the rental car agencies. Uh, we are not intending to antagonize them, uh, you know, but they are in many ways uh, the reference in people's heads. Do you think you're eating into their business? Partly, uh, but that's not really the core of Turo. I mean, our core uh, mission is to enable people to monetize their cars. We've obviously uh, run into 
you know, the uh, antagonism and the, uh, you know, and the uh, hostility from the rental car industry because they're not used to seeing competition. It's kind of like what Airbnb dealt with with the major hotel companies. There was a lot of pushback. In the case of Airbnb, the hotel companies were saying, well, we have to pay all these taxes, these fees, and Airbnb hosts, they don't have to do that. That's unfair. Mm -hmm. Is it a similar situation for you, especially when you have people renting at airports? Yeah, there's absolutely the same uh, you know, situation for us. Actually. Is it fair? What they don't like to talk about is the uh, you know, significant tax subsidy they get uh, because they actually don't have to pay any uh, sales tax on any of the cars that they purchase for their fleet. Enterprise, which has the world's largest rental car fleet, calls this argument a red herring because companies, whatever industry they're in, typically don't pay sales tax on equipment they purchase for commercial purposes, including rentals. Enterprise says peer-to-peer -peer operators hope to avoid applicable taxes, plain and simple. Turo's response? What we hope to avoid is having a competitor dictate how we should be regulated and taxed. Airbnb says since 2014, it's established agreements with local governments around the world and it's collected more than $1.5 billion in transient occupancy taxes to date. With Airbnb, you had people who basically became hoteliers themselves. They would have entire buildings that they would start renting out on Airbnb. Do you have some customers who are creating their own mini car rental agencies at airports? We don't have the, the same kind of scale that Airbnb has, uh, you know, but we have some car enthusiasts like myself who uh, have found Turo to be a great opportunity to be able to get another car, a third car, a fourth car, because the reality is, you know, when you bring these cars and list them on the app, they can generate a lot of earnings. So it's still, you know, a small percentage of our community that's going out and getting a second or third or fourth car. Well, are people creating businesses, entire businesses of renting cars using Turo? I don't think there's anything of that scale of like uh, creating a business. Enterprise says that many hosts actually own or operate fleets of 10 or 15 or even more vehicles on these platforms. It's our opinion that all rental car transactions, including those through peer-to-peer -peer companies, have the same tax obligations that every other car rental provider has today. Turo acknowledges that some entrepreneurial hosts have embraced the economic opportunity the marketplace provides.